Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome back to our channel. I'm gonna start this video with a weird statement. Imagine you have to function without a brain. Well, that sounds downright impossible, right? Even while these words are being said, they're being registered into your brain for understanding and processing. Just like how the brain serves as the functioning mechanism in your body, a microprocessor serves as the functioning mechanism of a computer. In other words, these microprocessors are the brain of your computer, your mobile phone, and most other electronic devices that you may use in your day-to-day -day life. In this video, you will come across Across a brief introduction to microprocessors. Now, let me ask you a simple question. Do you think that our fans and tube lights have a microprocessor in them? If your answer is no, well, you guessed it right. Why do you think that? Well, this is because they don't require any processing in them. You basically switch it on and your fan starts rotating at the speed at which it is set. Similarly, a tube light starts emitting light when it is switched on. Then what are the other areas in which microprocessors are used? Microprocessors are used in any equipment that requires some sort of processing to be done from the traffic light to remotes to our computers all have microprocessors in them these processors have an algorithm and they work in a previously programmed manner according to the instructions given now you must be wondering where and how did the invention of microprocessors take place well microprocessors were first invented 50 years ago at a young silicon valley startup called intel the first microprocessor was the intel 4004 invented in 1971 and it was a 4 bit processor it was soon succeeded by Intel 8008 in 1972 and since then the development in microprocessors has been huge. Back in 2018 Intel released its i9-9900K which is a 9th gen processor and was claimed to be the fastest gaming processor in the world by Intel at that time. Now coming to the components of the microprocessor they are divided into three basic segments the ALU registers and a control unit. Each of these has a specific predefined role. The first component, that is the ALU or arithmetic logic units, are the building blocks. They perform all mathematical and logical calculations on the data that has been fed into it. The mathematical calculations include addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc. And the logical calculations are the AND or AND NOT operations. Next, we have the registers. The registers are temporary data storage locations in the microprocessor. Depending upon the need, they either hold data or point in the direction where the data is located. Registers are divided into three categories, namely general purpose registers, specific registers, and memory registers. Depending on the need, data can be stored or extracted from them accordingly. The control unit controls the operation in the microprocessor. It dictates how the internal memory of the computer should respond to the given instructions and controls the flow of data between the microprocessor and the system. The microprocessor is further connected to the input devices, memory unit, and the output devices. The input devices are used to feed information into the microprocessors. The memory unit is the internal storage unit of the microprocessor. It is commonly known as the RAM. This unit stores all data and information that is required for processing. It also stores intermediate results of programming. Finally, we have the output devices. The output devices provide the results of the data that has been computed by the processor. The output can be in multiple forms. It can be in visual form when you consider the monitor of your computer, or it can be in an audible form when you consider the speaker of your computer. Next, let us discuss how the microprocessor works. The working of a microprocessor follows a simple fetch, decode and execute cycle. In this, the microprocessor first fetches the function to be executed from the memory. Now, the instruction is present in an encoded form in the memory. After it's been decoded, the control unit of the processor then passes these decoded instructions to be executed. This cycle continues till a stop instruction is reached or till the program ends. Well, that's it for this video, guys. In this video, we learned about how microprocessors are an indispensable part of any computational device, how they came into existence, and and how they function. In our upcoming videos, we'll learn more about microprocessors. Until the next one, bye!